Hi, this is Sunny Solanki and you are tuned to Coders Column. In today's video, I will explain how you can access ChatGPT in Python Jupyter Notebooks. We will be accessing ChatGPT to OpenAI REST APIs. Now, there are different ways to access OpenAI APIs, but we will be accessing API through OpenAI Python module, which is designed by OpenAI team itself. It's the easiest way to access the REST API. So, without further delay, let's get started with the coding part. As you can see on my screen, I already have a Jupyter Notebook open where we will be coding for accessing the API. And at the beginning of the notebook, I have highlighted few important sections. So these are the topics that we'll be covering. So we'll be covering how you can act, how you can create and set APIs, then retrieve a list of models, how you can use a text generation model, chat GPT, and so on. So now before we start with the coding, first of all, you need to install OpenAI Python module. So you can install OpenAI Python module using this command, pip install OpenAI. All right, so let's get started with the coding. So first of all, I have imported OpenAI over here and printed the current version. So this is the latest and stable version installed on my system. Now, before we access the OpenAI API, we need to create an API key and we need to set it in our OpenAI module. So you can go to this URL https slash platform.openai.com. And once you go to this, uh, this URL, you first of all, you need to create an account with uh, OpenAI and then you will be able to log in and then you will be able to go to this uh, URL. So over here, you can go to this section API key and there is a button create new secret key so you can create a new secret key from over here and you can delete and manage your other keys as well all right and then there are other sections over here like uh, organization id is available from here in settings and you can check your usage so as you can see the usage over here is 0 0.13 dollar out of 5 dollar so when you create a new account with uh, open ai they give you $5 credit for three months, but then they will charge you for using their API. And then you can check rate limits as well for each of the models. So for, as you can see for chat GPT, uh, for GPT 3.5, the limit of requests per minute is three requests per minute and tokens per minute in it is uh, 40,000 tokens per minute. So these are the rate limits with, with, which will be applied to your account. So keep that in mind. Now, if you want to know like uh, what is the pricing of uh, OpenAI REST API, so you can visit this URL openai.com slash pricing. And over here, they have listed the pricing of using various models. So as you can see, the pricing is based on 1000 tokens. So 1000 tokens is around 750 words. And as you can see, the pricing are for 1000 tokens. So you can see price for each of the models which they provide. All right, so let's go to Jupyter Notebook again. So I have saved my organization ID and uh, API key in this file name API key.txt. So in the first line, I have a organization ID and in the second line, I have API key. So I'm simply loading that file, reading the contents and splitting it by new line. So in org, I have a organization ID and API key variable, I have API key. So once you have that, you need to call this OpenAI dot organization attribute and set it to organization in the same way you need to set API key. So once you have done that, the authorization uh, will be done using this API key. Right. So let's move on to next uh, section. Now, before we hit any API, first of all, we will retrieve the list of models and then we will go to chat GPT and text generation part. So these are the list of models which are available from OpenAI REST APIs, which is GPT-4, GPT-3.5, DAL-E, Whisper, and so on. So in order to retrieve models list, you can simply execute this command, openai.model.list. So you need to call this list method on this model object. So let me execute this. Now what this will do is that it will hit the OpenAI REST API and will retrieve the list of models which are available. And the output is OpenAI object. Now this object is nothing but a wrapper around a Python dictionary. So you can treat it the same way you treat dictionary. So I will call keys method over here on that object. And as you can see, it has two keys object and data. 
and in data and the data about the list of models is present so over here i am looping through models of data for each model and then i am retrieving model ids so as you can see there are total 64 models available from uh, open AI rest apis and now as you can see the main high level models are these but they have fine-tuned various models for different tasks like text generation, conversation, edits, embeddings generation and moderation and so on. So that's why there are so many models because there are models which are uh, fine-tuned for different tasks. And if you check for a model starting with GPT, so currently GPT 3.5 Turbo and the other variation of it is available. Let me execute this cell. So these are some of the other models which are available from uh, OpenAI REST API. So that's how you can retrieve the list of models available. Right, so let's move on to third section. So in this section, I will explain you how you can access GPT-3 model. So GPT-3 is a text generation model. And as you can see from this image, I have highlighted various endpoints which are available from uh, OpenAI API. So the first endpoint is a chat endpoint, which is for chat GPT. And the second endpoint is for completion. So this is for text generation. So we'll be using this endpoint in this section. And in the next section, we will go for a chat GPT. So on the, on the right side, as you can see, the models which are compatible with that endpoint, their names are given. All right. So let's do some text generation task so in order to do text generation over here i have created a simple uh, text variable named uh, prompt so over here i have set input text suggest three different ways of doing push-ups now in order to access uh, text generation uh, endpoint we can we need to call this openai.completion.create and on this create method we need to give model name so over here i am giving a model name which is text that's davinci that's g003 so this is the latest uh, gpt3 model and then i need to give prompt so whatever text so this is a text generation model it will generate text which it feels right should come after this line so let me execute it and as you can see this one is a dictionary object just like uh, other response objects and as you can see, it has a various keys. From this, two important keys are choices and usage. In choices, the list of responses generated by this uh, model will be there. And usage will have usage information. So in the next cell, I'm looping through choices. So for each choice, I'm printing the number of choice. And then inside of choice, cho cho so choice is again a uh, dictionary. And we can access the text the content of the text which is generated by model by calling this key text right so here is the response which is generated by our model so as you can see it's not a full text and the reason behind this is that by default this uh, text generation endpoint returns only 16 tokens so that's why you see over here there are the complete text is not present but in the upcoming section i will explain you how you can modify that uh, tokens so you have a complete response and then in response another key is usage so usage is uh, usage information about this uh, request so as you can see there were 16 completion tokens so this response was of 16 tokens and prompt tokens were nine so this suggests three different ways of doing push-ups was broken down into nine tokens so one two three four five six eight nine i think push-ups and then dots will be divided further so that's how they generate uh, tokens and then there are total tokens which is sum of completion and prompt tokens so based on total tokens they charge you so the for 1000 requests they charge you some 0 0.003 or some dollars and so if you want to know usage information of your request then you can use this uh, usage key and over here i have included a sample image so how they uh, what uh, open ai considers as a token so tokens are generally words but sometimes they do break down words further as you can see in case coders column is broken further but on an average the 
token size is four characters yeah all right so that's how you can generate text so in this section i explain how you can generate text using this completions endpoint all right so let's move on and try chat gpt okay so in this section i will explain you how you can access chat gpt so chat gpt that we'll be accessing will be based on version gpt 3.5 Currently access to GPT-4 is based on a request only and uh, there is a wait list. So we'll be using GPT-3.5. Now for accessing chat GPT, we'll be using this endpoint v one chat slash completions. And as you can see, these are the compatible models. So we'll be using GPT-3.5 dash turbo. Now the input to chat GPT will be list of messages because it's a conversational uh, model which can take on list of messages and then make the next prediction. So it can take into consideration context, unlike our previous model, which we tried, which does not take into consideration context. So all the response will be independent of the previous messages. So in order to give messages, uh, we need to give list of messages. So there will be list of dictionaries, which we need to give. So first will be our simple input. So over here in this dictionary, I have set content key as a suggest three different ways of doing push-ups, and we also need to give role. So our role will be generally users, user, and whatever chat GPT is returns, uh, their role will be assistant. So that's the messages that we need to set, and then we need to call OpenAI dot chat completion. So this is the another endpoint. And then we not need to call a create method on it. So over here, I have used model as a gpt-3.5 dash dash turbo and then we need to give messages over here so in uh, as we are just starting with the chatting this is the first message which we will give so let me execute this cell so it has executed and it has written response object it is again is a dictionary object so again there are responses generated are available through this choices key of that response object so we will simply look through it and inside of choices, there is a key name message where role and content both are present. So let me execute it. And as you can see, the role of the response generated by ChatGPT was the assistant and it generated this text. And as you can notice uh, this time, it generated full text because uh, this endpoint chat completion, uh, it has, uh, it returns infinite number of tokens. So there is no upper limit on the response generated by this endpoint. So yeah, so that's it. So that's the response generated by our chat GPT. Now what we can do is that we can follow up on this uh, particular response. So in order to do that, first of all, we need to take our response and we need to merge it in our original message. So let me do that. So now as you can see messages, so this is the original message which we sent. And then this is the role assistant and the content. This one was written by chat GPT. So this is the conversation. So let's add one more message over here and let's follow up and let's ask it. Great. Which one is the best for upper body growth? So now, as you can see, I have modified message. So there are three values, original message, response by chat GPT, and then another follow up question. Now we will give this uh, messages to chat GPT to generate response. So let me execute it. All right. So it has generated response. So let's check the response. And as you can see, again, the role is assistant. So as you can see, all three push-up styles work great for building upper body strength and muscle mass. So it took into consideration this question, earlier question where we had asked for three different ways of doing push-ups. So that's the benefit of using uh, conversational AI. They take into consideration all the previous messages, unlike text generation, where each of the requests are independent of the previous one. Yeah, so it was that easy to use a chat completion endpoint. And you need to combine these messages each time you interact with the chat GPT REST API. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's move on to the next section. All right, so in this section, I explain how we can modify the number of tokens returned by various endpoints. So as we discussed earlier, the completions endpoint returned only 16 tokens. So we had only half of our text, not full text. And the chat completion endpoint returned infinite number of tokens. Now this can be risky as well as it can use up a lot of your rate limits. So giving the 
adding the limit to the number of tokens that this model is written can save you some money. So if you want to know how tokens are generated, then there is a URL name, this platform.openai.com slash tokenize it. So you can go to this URL and you can enter whatever text that you want to enter and it will generate how it will tell you how tokens are generated as you can see so below you should be able to see that there are seven tokens and 29 characters were there so these are the token based on which that gpt our open ai chart charges us for money okay so how you can set the limit on number of tokens that gets returned by endpoint of uh, open ai api so I will be again using the text generation prompt or text generation endpoint which we had used earlier. So the code is uh, same over here. I am again using the same prompt of generating three different ways of doing push-ups. Again using text DaVinci 03 model. And I have again I have added a new parameter which is max tokens. So by default this parameter has value 16 for this uh, completion endpoint. And I have set it to 200. So let me execute that one and okay so it executed now let me show you the result now as you can see once i have set uh, 200 tokens now it returned me full full text so let me take you there in the first section over here if you have noticed only half of the text was written only 16 token so if you want to modify you can do that using max tokens and then if you want to check you say you can do that so as you can see completion tokens were only 144 though we had a set upper limit of uh, 200 and the chat gpt generated response of only 144 tokens so always uh, you can check the usage for request using this usage key all right so let's move on to next section so till now if you have noticed there was only one choice which was written by all the models if you know there is only one choices but if you want variety, if you want to see like different number of uh, outputs so that you can select which output you want to use, then there is a parameter name n which you can set and the value of this parameter is one by default. That's why you only see one response and this parameter max tokens and n are available in all of the rest APIs. So let me execute this one. So I'm again using the text generation prompt over here. And now let me show you the list of choices. As you can see, this time it returned three choices. And as you can see, the outputs are somewhat different for all the choices. Over here, traditional push-ups, elevated push-ups, and wall push-ups over here, traditional, then wall push-up, and then plyometric, and so on. So all these uh, three options are different. Now keep in mind, if you use uh, more than one choices, then the number of tokens used will be high. So as you can see 419 tokens are used over here so different token counts will be for each choice right so let's move on to the next section so in this last section we'll discuss how you can add a little bit of randomness to generate a non-deterministic output so if you notice by default the chat gpt or gpt models generally adds a some amount of uh, randomization or some amount of variety so all these three outputs which were generated previously are different so some amount of randomness is already there but how you can modify the amount of randomness that is added or how the various outputs are non-deterministic so there is a parameter named temperature and this parameter accepts value in the range 0 to 2 and the default value of this parameter is 1 so some amount of randomness is already added so over here i am setting the value to 0 to show you that once we set this value to zero, all the choices generated by the chat GPT or GPT models will be same. So let me show you the three response. So as you can see this time, all the three responses are same because we removed any randomness that was added. Now, if you want to see like, or if you want to add some randomness, then you can set this parameter to some values so i am setting it over here to value 0 0.5 so let me execute this now this will add some amount of randomness and uh, the choices that it generates will be different so as you can see this time all the three choices are different it says standard push-ups inclined push-ups wall push-ups and over here there is a stand traditional push-ups 
wide grip push up decline up. so all these uh, choices are different right so that's it for today's tutorial in today's tutorial we covered how you can access chat gpt in jupyter notebook using open ai rest apis to access api we use the open ai python module created by open ai team and we explained two different endpoints which is completion and chat completion one was for a text generation and another one was for a conversational ai so yeah that's it for this tutorial if you have any doubts or any question then please feel free to let me know now i know that the open ai api can be overwhelming for the newcomer so if you are interested in learning more about open ai apis then stay tuned to our channel as i will be publishing more videos on detailed information about open api so yeah that's it if you liked our video and you feel that you learned something new today then give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and see you next time